Hi, today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to identify pebbles. Uh, the weather's pretty nice now, so a lot more people are out and about and going to parks. And one of the things that at least my kids like to do is pick up pebbles and ask me uh, where they came from. So hopefully in this uh, lecture we'll talk a little bit about how to identify them and also how to, how to tell the story uh, the different pebbles we find. Um, so the first thing I think I want to look at is just looking at the pebbles themselves. So um, we can have these ones here that are really rough around the edges. There's lots of angles. Um, and this means that they've been relatively uh, carried a relatively short distance. They've been broken down relatively nearby and have been transported too far. Whereas the other side, we can have these ones that are really rounded and they've been uh, this means that they've been carried further and there's been more time where they've been knocked up against other pebbles and brought down usually through rivers but also sometimes by glaciers um, and transported some distance which makes them more rounded uh, and it'll progressively make them smaller as well. Uh, and we can also find things that are kind of in between like this one here. Uh, where it's still generally angular, it's not round or anything like that, but it's a bit smoother than that first one I had, which is here. So uh, this, these uh, rounded ones here are all river pebbles, where this, this is from a lake and it's probably was transported mostly by a glacier. All right, now what you might have also noticed in this is this little triangle here of the different rock types. Um, so there's three main types of rocks. There's igneous rocks that formed uh, from cr uh, crystallization or cooling of molten rock, which is magma. We have sedimentary rocks, which are made up of small pieces of other rocks that are broken down. And we have metamorphic rocks, which are uh, rocks that were either began as igneous or sedimentary and changed after they got heated up uh, and compressed by being buried deep in the earth. Now, we call this the rock cycle because um, if we break up igneous rocks uh, and uh, mash those pieces of broken rock together, we're gonna make a sedimentary rock. Or if we heat up and put a lot of pressure on an igneous rock, we're gonna make a metamorphic rock. Or we can have sedimentary rocks and they can be made up of either pieces of igneous rocks or pieces of metamorphic rocks uh, to make a new sedimentary rock. And metamorphic rocks are formed by, either, by heating and pressurizing either sedimentary or igneous rocks. So each rock type can turn into one of the other rock types. All right, now we'll go on to talk about the different rock types um, and how we can tell what the history of that rock was based on the pebbles. Um, we're going to start with um, with igneous rocks because it's kind of the starting point of all rocks. Um, the way we identify something as being igneous is we can see well-formed crystals in it. Now we might sometimes get crystals in uh, in sedimentary rocks but they'll usually be broken up a little bit and transported uh, and often there will be like other sorts of um, pieces in it and sometimes we'll get the well formed pr some crystals in metamorphic rocks we'll go into more detail but you can see you can see the sparkle here as I turn that but usually in metamorphic rocks these are going to be in a specific layers uh, whereas igneous rocks well there can be some layering they're going to be all mixed around and you want to have a close look at it um, and also it can help to wet them down. So, so wetting the rocks can help us see them a little bit better. Um, most of the ones I have here don't really need it but uh, especially uh, finer grained rocks can help to wet them down so you can see the crystals more. Now um, when we look closer into these um, we can see that we have different uh, crystals that make up our igneous rocks. So we're going to have some darker like black ones. Um, those are usually going to be something like a horn blend uh, or a biotite. It's not that important but they're they're more mafic minerals. We're going to have the whiter or pinker crystals. These are usually feldspars uh, and then we have various amounts of quartz um, which is going to come usually be 
kind of a light color in these, but it's going to be a little bit more glossy than the feldspars. Now, one of the way the things that we can tell about um, igneous rocks is the grain size. It will tell us something about how fast it cooled. So usually larger crystals like this one here uh, came from a rock that cooled slower and finer grained ones cooled faster. Um, so if we have things like la uh, actual lava solidification, they're going to be very fine grained. We're not actually going to see that much grain in those, so we may see some little holes. Um, so those can be somewhat more difficult to identify uh, as igneous because they'll be so fine grained, it'll be hard to see the crystals. Um, the other thing we can tell, so we can tell a bit about the history, the cooling history, how fast it cooled uh, based on the grain size. Now, another thing we can tell is how evolved it is. So um, the first formed igneous rocks are going to be darker. So they're going to have what we call mafic minerals. Uh, these are going to be things like olivines and peroxines. And those are going to form when the, when the starting magma um, starts to crystallize first. Uh, and as we get more of those darker minerals um, precipitate out, we're going to get less and less darker minerals. So this would be our most mafic. This is going to be less mafic. And this one's going to be even less mavic still. So as we get progressively less dark crystals, that means that um, we've crystallized even more and more magma. So this is the most evolved. So it's the formed after the largest amount of the magma chamber has crystallized. And this is the least evolved. They're the first ones to crystallize. All right. Now we're going to move on to talk about sedimentary rocks. Now one thing that we can often see uh, in sedimentary rocks is what's called bedding. So these lines on this rock are um, due to the sediments being uh, laid down in layers like a book. So if this was in, in an ocean basin, what's probably carrying a lot of these sediments uh, would be rivers. And as the speed of that river changes over time, we're going to be putting coarser or finer material and kind of the dark layers are probably a little bit of organic matter which is the very finest material um, so layering is often something we can see in sedimentary rocks now if you look close we can sometimes see grain size changes so this is a fine grain sandstone i imagine it's very similarly colored so it's hard to tell um, but you can see in sedimentary rocks, sometimes uh, small bits of uh, sand that make up the rock. And that's going to tell you that it's a sedimentary rock. I will show this one here. One thing that we'll only get in sedimentary rocks is uh, fossils. So if I can hold this up close, you might be able to see that there's little round... Um, let me go wet it, sorry. So there's these little round uh, structures. These are fossils. So they're, these are actually from crinoids, um, but it's a bunch of little fossils that are making up the, this, um, uh, this rock, uh, which tells us right away that it's a sedimentary rock. Uh, another common type of sedimentary rock um, are very fine grained, and they may be difficult to see any grains, but um, this black, fine grain color that actually shows bedding. So we can see that there's one darker bed here that goes all the way around the crystal. Um, that is a more organic rich layer in this shale. So shales are a pretty common type of sedimentary rock. They're usually going to be pretty close to source too because they're going to um, be eroded very rapidly. Um, one thing like the igneous rocks, we can tell how far um, the sediments were uh, transported based largely on the colors of the of, of the rocks so um, finer grained rocks are usually a bit further from source so the the big pieces usually get um, broken down and don't make it all as far down a river channel say um, but also the the color of them so the first minerals to break down are those are the mafic minerals that we talked about. 
uh, when we're talking about igneous rocks. So the further we get from source, the fewer of those mafic uh, pieces we're going to have in it, and the lighter colored the rock is going to be. So this would be the sediments are closer to source, getting progressively further away as our rock gets lighter in color. And the only caveat to that is that organic matter is going to be black, and that's going to filter down at any point. So that might be quite um, distal to source, but if we're looking at something where we can actually see the grain size, uh, the lighter the color, usually the further from source we are. All right. Last one we're going to talk about is uh, metamorphic rocks, and these are rocks that um, have been changed due to having high amounts of pressure uh, and temperature put on the rocks. And what these will usually um, be indicated by is we have distinct layering um, or at least formation of crystals that are all arranged in the same plane. So this is a, a, a fairly um, what we call high grade metamorphic rock. So it's been heated at pretty high temperatures and pressures. Um, this one would be a little bit lower grade and we can still see a shine on the surface. So we're not seeing really distinctive layers when we see looking cross section. Um, but there's a lot of sparkle on the surface, and that's from biotite forming. So this is, uh, micas are one of the earlier what, things to for, form during metamorphism. And as you progressively metamorphose the rock, we're going to get more and more of it. And initially, it's just going to be like a shimmer on the surface. Um, this would be almost a schist, but when you just see a shimmer, it's called a phyllite. And that's a low-grade metamorphic rock. And when we look at these ones here, when we're seeing actual layers of metamorphic uh, or of, of darker minerals versus lighter minerals, this is telling us that we're getting more and more uh, pressure and temperature. And then at the highest grades, we're going to have really distinct bands of like black and white, black and white, or mafic and felsic material. Um, so I think, I hope that that um, helps you identify some of the uh, rocks in the area when you go out uh, camping or hiking this summer. Um, and I'll go through uh, another idea that you can do before you head out to give you a little bit more uh, ammunition in, in identifying the pebbles you find. Now, to give yourself a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of help when you're trying to identify these and the sorts of things in pebbles and as well as outcrop in the field, you can have a look at government geology maps before you head out. So this is an example from BC, um, and it's a map, government geology map that was actually done in the 1940s. Um, and how this would be done is you, if we were, say, uh, going on a hike up Spasm Creek here, um, we would have a look at this government geology map, and we see that there's two main rock units here and here in this creek. Um, and then this is unmapped up here, so it could be something else. Um, so it's this uh, orange uh, color and this kind of salmon colored color. And uh, that that is sort of the rocks that we're likely to see in this area. Um, so we just go to the legend, we see that um, the salmon colored one is uh, mostly granite or granite diorite. So it's an intrusive rock. And then the orange color is mostly uh, nice, so granitic nice. So this is a metamorphosed, uh, a metamorphic rock that was actually metamorphosed by uh, metamorphosing a, or by uh, metamorphosing a granite. So, so as we go back to the map, if we were walking up this creek, we would probably expect to see pebbles that are that metamorphic rock, um, and we may also see. Uh, some pebbles uh, from the granite rocks further upstream, and as we walk, continue to walk up, we would expect to only see these granite rocks. If we saw something else, it would probably be from the glacier erratic or from the very headwaters of this uh, stream. The other thing that the uh, geological maps and the legends are likely to tell us is the, actually the age of uh, these rocks. So we know that um, the metamorphic rock was from the Jurassic period, so it's uh, one of the time periods that dinosaurs were around, um, and then that the uh, salmon-colored one is from Jurassic or later. Uh, and more modern 
maps will probably have more accurate dates than these. This one's actually an old one from the 40s that I had around, so I thought I'd show you. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about uh, geology and how to identify uh, pebbles when you're out hiking. Thanks. Bye.